From up in the sky to below the Earth's surface, we are still discovering the mysteries of the world. Some of these discoveries bring us closer to protecting our environment, some still leave us with more questions. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent discoveries. Mountain-sized rock hidden underneath Japan may be acting as a magnet for megaquakes. Japan has been a hotbed for large earthquakes over the past 10 years. This is because Japan lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is an area where two tectonic plates meet. When tectonic plates meet, it usually results in a large number of earthquakes and volcanoes. These earthquakes along the Pacific Ring of Fire does not explain why the Nankai Subduction Zone, a smaller area of southern Japan, was experiencing exponentially more earthquakes than its surrounding areas. A giant mass of igneous rock in the Nankai Subduction Zone in southern Japan could be acting as a lightning rod for these large earthquakes. The rock was named the Kamano Pluton. A pluton is a group of igneous rocks that displaces underground rock. It slowly cools and hardens in a large chunk. Scientists believe this mass could help them understand how large igneous structures interact with ongoing tectonic activity and predict the impact of large earthquakes in southern Japan. This could hopefully lead to scientists predicting large earthquakes with more accuracy as they learn more about how subterranean structures can affect the Earth's crust. While it is essential to recognize the destructiveness of earthquakes, they can be used by scientists to understand the world beneath our feet. When an earthquake occurs, seismic waves move through structures and materials that lay underground. Scientists then use these waves to generate high-definition 3D models of the area. Geophysicist Shuchi Kadaira of the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology in Japan said, we cannot predict exactly when, where or how large future earthquakes will be. But by combining our model with monitoring data, we can begin estimating near future processes. That will provide very important data for the Japanese public to prepare for the next big earthquake. The Pluton was initially found in 2006, but no significant findings have been discovered until now. After 20 years, a team of researchers has mapped the entirety of the Nankai subduction zone using seismic data. They found that the Pluton's weight is bending the Earth's crust. The pressure is causing the Earth's crust to sink under the weight, while outer areas on the outskirts of the Pluton bulge up surrounding the mass. This is creating a pathway for water to dip past the Earth's crust into the upper mantle, making the bend in the Earth's crust even larger. The Kamano Pluton is also affecting tectonic activity in the area. The outer edges of the Pluton have seen massive earthquakes with magnitudes higher than 8. This opens the door to study other areas with large earthquakes to determine if subterranean structures might be hiding there too. Geophysicist Adrian Arnulf from the University of Texas Institute for Geophysics said, The fact that we can make such a large discovery in an area that is already well studied is, I think, eye-opening to what might await at places that are less well monitored. Amateur astronomer discovers new moon orbiting Jupiter For the first time ever, an amateur astronomer discovered a new moon in our galaxy. After poring over photos of possible Jovian moons, Kai Li discovered a new moon orbiting Jupiter. This is not the first discovery that Kai Li has made. In 2020, they discovered four lost Jupiter moons. Li used old telescope images from 2003 taken by the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope to find the new Jupiter moon. They were interested in finding another moon on Jupiter, so they analyzed the photos and discovered three possible moons. Then, with photos taken days later, one of the potential moons remained. Lee paid a lot of attention to the photos taken in 2003 because the moons were at their brightest. In 2003, the moons were experiencing a phenomenon called opposition. Opposition occurs when a planet and the sun appear on opposite ends of the Earth's sky, illuminating the planet's system and satellites. 
In February 2003, this occurred in Jupiter. Lee continued to trace the Moon's orbit from images taken from 2003 through to 2018. In total, there were roughly 76 sightings of the Moon over a 15-year period. The Moon was found in the Calm Cluster, which includes 22 other space rocks that share similar orbit patterns. Calm is the largest rock in this cluster. While Lee first thought the Moon might be another satellite rock orbiting near Calm, they learned that it was a moon after they calculated the object's trajectory. It is incredible Lee was able to view the moon since some of the Jupiter moons are so small that they can only be detected once a year by even the largest telescope. Lee hopes to make more discoveries in the future, although they described moon hunting as a summer hobby before I returned to school. More moon discoveries are definitely possible. In 2020, Edward Ashton, Matthew Boudouin and Brett J. Gladman from the University of British Columbia have made preliminary observations that suggest Jupiter could have over 600 satellite moons. The Sun is reawakening with Cannibal CME The Sun is waking up and coming back stronger than scientists predicted. In late 2021, the Earth was hit with a sizable geomagnetic storm because of the increased number of sunspots on the surface of the Sun. Sunspots are areas of intense magnetic activity, or a magnetic storm, on the surface of the Sun that becomes more prevalent every 11 years. The Sun's activity ebbs and flows throughout those 11 years, starting from the solar minimum part of the cycle to the solar maximum, which will be occurring around 2025. So as we approach 2025, solar activity will increase, creating everything from increased auroras to satellite destruction. The most recent sun activity has been a series of CMEs or coronal mass ejections. Basically, CMEs are bubbles of solar material that the sun expels. They are made up of plasma gas with magnetic fields that create issues when they interact with the Earth's magnetic field. Bill Murta, a program coordinator at the Space Weather Prediction Center of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration described this phenomenon by saying, the two magnets are going to come together, and that's going to create this geomagnetic storm. When a CME is expelled, it moves through space, carving a pathway for later CMEs. Once another CME is expelled, it may move more quickly, overtake its predecessor and combine with it. This combination creates CMEs that are larger and larger. This occurrence is called a cannibal CME. These types of geomagnetic space weather storms are interesting to scientists, but they also pose a real-life threat to us. More scientific events like these can impact and interfere with vital pieces of infrastructure like radio communications, power grids, and satellites. So far, nothing has happened on a large enough scale. But if a larger cannibal CME was to occur, the impact might be more serious. The best example of this would be the 12-hour blackout in Quebec, Canada in 1989 after a large solar storm. Unfortunately, it can be difficult to predict space weather. Bill Murta said, We've got some skill in forecasting the solar cycle, but we're not great at it just yet. There are lots of unknowns in the space weather business from an underground rock that can help us understand how to predict earthquakes to the discovery of new Jovian moons to the sun's reawakening. Scientists are helping us understand the mysteries in our world, one discovery at a time. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And please help us grow this community by liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.